Okay, for this one, I'd like to do another IPO calculator, but I'm going to do that color brightness formula. So it's a little more of a complicated formula. So I have some start code here. Again, I'll put it in the... Sorry, I can't type and talk at the same time. Calculate brightness calculator. Something like that. And yeah. So I have the start code here, which was just the, the GUI, just the HTML and the CSS, the graphical user interface. Um, and we'll just get it launched up here. Hopefully you're getting familiar with this. We'll clone it down to here. Looks good. And we're going to add some JavaScript to this, still with alert and prompt. We're getting closer to doing the, uh, the HTML stuff. All right, open this up. And we'll go live. Yeah, see, so he's got all the HTML in here, all the CSS, but no, no JavaScript. Well, just hi. Um, so I can go live. And ta-da, there it is. Let's open up our console. Now again, yeah, so the JavaScript's working great, says hi. So again, we're not going to use the HTML yet. We will do that later. I'll show you how to get the value of these input elements, how to display the answer here. Um, listen to the click event on, on this button here. But let's just do another alert to prompt just to make sure we got that down pat. So in here, again, I'm going to get rid of this. We'll do our title. Um, Calculate Brightness IPO Calculator by Mr. B. Sure. Um, why don't we just call this a Brightness IPO Calculator by Mr. B. There we go. Okay, now again, input, process, output, right? That's that basic algorithm that we're doing here. It's very common. So the inputs are, what are my inputs? Um, if we look at our web page, I need a red, a green, and a blue. Right, so I'll just do let r value maybe I can do here, or right, let's just call it let's just call it r. Usually we do variables as lowercase starting, but I think this I can we can do this a single letter variable. Let r be assigned prompt enter uh, r color value. Sure. Now remember with the r RGB values we expect them to be numerical input. So this prompt function always returns a string. If I put a plus sign in front, it'll convert that string into a number. So the variable r will be storing a number. OK. Uh, and then let's, I'm just going to hit copy and paste. So if your cursor is anywhere on the line and you hit control C, it'll copy that line. And then you can just hit control V and it'll paste it, um, insert it into the current line. So control V and then one more time, control V. And now it's complaining here because we have variables with the same name. You can't do that. So R, G, and B. Enter a G value and a B value. Um, and I'll just add in brackets here. Maybe I'll say red. Enter a G color value. Blue. And uh, hello, G. Um, green. There we go. Enter a B value. Blue. Sure. Okay, so that's my inputs. And now it's often, I'm not going to write, let's, let's test this. So how do I test this? Well, one way I can do this is I'm actually going to do a quick little console.log. Okay. This is kind of like the alert function that is used to output values. But instead of opening it up into an alert box, it actually just logs this into the console. So whatever I put inside the parentheses is the message that I want to send to the console. So I'm just going to um, output R. And I'll hit Control C again, and then Control V, G, oops, G, and then down to here, B. Okay, so all I'm doing here is I'm saying I want to run this prompt function, store the values into these variables here, and I just want to log them into the console just to make sure that it's working, that they're storing the right numbers. So let's save that. This is kind of the idea of incremental programming. I, I'm writing a little bit of code, the import part, input part, and I want to test it to make sure it works. So let's go 255.0.180. 255.0.180. And notice there's no quotations around them, right? These are actual numerical values. So that's great. One more time. 0, 0, 255. Great. Okay, so that looks like the inputs are working great. Um, one thing I want to show you too is that in console.log, you can actually separate by commas as well if you want to print out multiple things. So let's try that. 180. Uh, 80 and 55. 
right? It is the R and then the G and the B values separated by space. So you can separate by commas and we'll print out, log each of those things to the console. Okay, anyway, I don't need that anymore because I know that it works. Yay! Okay, now we'll do the process, process section. And the process section is this crazy formula here. Okay, so this just means that it's 0 0.299 multiplied by r squared plus this multiplied by g squared. Remember, order of operations, we've got to do the exponents first. And then I take the square root of the entire thing. So the first thing we should talk about is maybe how to take a square root of something. We did exponents before, right? Remember, star star is to the power of. Um, square root, actually, there's something you could do here. Um, the square root of 25 is 5, right? 5 squared is 25. Square root of 25 is 5. Um, oh, I've done it before here. It's doing the autocomplete. Um, taking something to the power of 1 half is the same as doing the square root. Okay, that's a mathematical rule that we have that to the power of 1 half is the same as the square root. So you could do that. Another way to do it is JavaScript has this math um, objects or math class that we can use. And if I go dot, there's all sorts of, I don't know why it's showing up there. That's kind of weird. Math dot. Anyway, it has all these different things we can do. Logs, maxes and mins, the pi constant we can use, um, trigonometry stuff. Ooh, this is the one I want. SQRT for square root. So this is a, a built-in function. And I basically can give this function a, a, a value, 25, and it'll return the square root of it. Right, so math of square root of 81 is 9. Of 80 is 8.9. Cool. Okay, so that's how we can do square roots. So in here, let's try this. Um, so I'm going to say let brightness be assigned. I'm going to do this technique, math dot square root. Okay, and inside of here, I'm going to take the square root of all of this stuff. So 0 0.299 times r squared. So let's just try to write that out. 0 0.299 uh, times r star star. Usually you do spaces between the operations just to make, make it easier to read. Okay, so star star 2 plus 0 0.587 g squared. Okay, 0 0.587 g squared plus... 0 0.114 b squared. 0, oops, 0 0.114 b squared, like so. Okay, wow. So this is the bit of a more, I just wanted to show you that JavaScript can do more complicated operations, right? We're going to do everything inside of these brackets, right? It'll do this times r squared plus this times g squared plus this times b squared. And then whatever the result of that is, we take the square root of it, and then we store that in this variable. Well, and then I'm just going to do an alert here. For now, I'm just going to do, well, let's do our, our thing here. Um, the brightness is, and then we'll insert the variable brightness, like so. Okay, let's try that. We'll save that. Okay, our value, so 255, 0, 180, let's say. And I get an error message. Interesting error message, 0 0.299 is not a function. Main.js line 9, right? Line 9, okay. Line 9 right here. 0 0.299 is not a function. Ah, I know what it's doing. See how we've got 0 0.299 and we're doing these parentheses here. That's how we call a function, right? When I go alert, that's the name of the function. In order to call the function, I do open and close parentheses, and then I put the message inside. When we do prompt, right, I do the name of the function followed by parentheses, and that's how I call the function. When we do math.square root, which is a function, I do parentheses so that it calls the function. Oh, NAN, that's interesting. NAN is not a number, so it's not a valid, I didn't give it a number, so it's like, hey, the square root of nothing is not a number. Anyway, the whole point of this is that whenever we call a function, we do the name of the function followed by parentheses. So here, JavaScript is thinking that I'm doing 0 0.299. It thinks this is the name of a function because I'm trying to call it by doing these parentheses. So in order to tell JavaScript that I want to multiply these things, 
we can't like, like in math class, right? This is when we do math. This is how we represent multiplication. We just do a number and then brackets. But JavaScript thinks this is trying to call a function, so we have to explicitly tell it, "I want you to take the variable r and square it, right? R star star two, square it, and then I want you to go 0 0.299 times that r squared." And it will do the r squared first because it knows to do order of operations, right? It will do the squared first and then it'll multiply. So same here, we have to put the star there, same here, the star there. Okay, so you can't just do the brackets, you have to explicitly tell it multiply. Okay, right, let's save that and now hopefully, let's go 255, 255, 255. That's white and it should have a brightness of 255. Well, very close. 254.9999. That's pretty good. Okay, um, let's try one more. Let's do something darker. Zero, zero, and then like a 180. And that has a much lower brightness, right? So the closer to zero it is, the darker it is. The closer to 255 it is, the brighter it is. Okay, that's cool. All right, so very, very similar to what we did before, right? Input, process, output. Remember that plus sign to convert things into numbers. But just showing you that we can do some more complex math. Um, and be careful about that implicit multiplication, right? You have to actually tell it, this is a star. I want to multiply these things. The square root thing, um, and lots of other math dot possibilities that you can do. Okay, hope that made sense. Um, you know what, maybe a fun challenge would be to try to change this. If you've learned about Pythagoras' theorem, that requires the square root as well. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. You could try something with that. Anyway, feel free to play around with this if you want. Okay, hope that made sense. Take care, and we'll see you in the next video.